take time to learn. You know, the more that you practice with it, just make things. You know, I randomly make things randomly all the time just to practice, randomly making things. So, um, so uh, again, we're doing a food app. So I'm going to steal some graphics from the Internet. If you remember, I gave you a demonstration of how to feel, steal from um, the, how to steal from, uh, the noun project, if you remember that, do you remember the noun project? Okay, so if you don't remember, a good place you can steal icons from is called the noun project dot com. And then, of course, you can put in your topic. I'm going to put in food. And then, so my food is going to be, uh, my idea was uh, reuse food or food, um, what was that about? My idea was food, leftover, leftover food, I don't know, something like that. I, I had my own logo and everything I made. It was like leftover food, but I like this kind of apple with a bite taken out of from Sammy. Uh -huh. Where is it? This one. So I'm going to steal this one. Uh, of course, if you are going to be legal, you should probably pay Sammy here because he was a um, he was the designer there here, Sammy. Or you can make yourself a, a collection and buy it from the Noun Project. This is a see, it is pricing. How much does it cost? See, you can pay. Um, but since I am uh, um, just a, a student learning how to do this kind of stuff, I'm going to steal for right now. I can click on that apple right there, and of course, since I don't have an account, I can steal it and put it in, make it into a vector on Illustrator. So again, to take a screen grab of the icon, I want to take a picture of this and then convert it into a vector. I can use Command Shift Four, and then draw my box around it. Draw my box around it, and it takes a picture. The other thing I'm going to make is that basically I'm going to demonstrate a login screen today. So also with my login screen, I want to have um, um, kind of like a member, a member icon. So I'm going to type in member. And uh, I'm going to do one more. Ooh, is this alien? Alien member? Which one says member to you most? This is a generic member guy. Is that a generic member person? Okay, I'm going to do this one as well. Command Shift 4. And I'm going to draw a box around that. Okay, so I, I've drawn boxes. So to convert these in, I think last class I was talking about how you can use vectors from Illustrator into Sketch, as well as demonstrated Illustrator into Photoshop. So in this case, if I open these up in Illustrator, I'm going to open these up in Illustrator. To place them in Illustrator, I'm going to use the file place, file place. And of course, you have screen captures. You see them, they're on the desktop. So if you use the command shift 4, and what would you use on Windows? What can you take a screen capture with on Windows? No Windows users here? Grab, what was it? Yeah, the print screen key, yeah, there is somewhat. But they, they have the snipping tool on Windows, right? Snipping, it's under accessory, snipping. Does the, kind of the same thing, snipping tool. So if I take and place this in here, there we go, I'm going to place it in there. Uh, you'll notice that you can trace image and convert this into a vector, because this is a bitmap because I took a screen grab, but I want to convert it into a vector. To convert it into a vector, there's a trace image option up here, but I don't want to just click the trace image because what I want to do is just have the apple. I don't want to have the white because right now if I just click this button that says trace image right here, it's going to give me a white shape and a black shape. I don't want white. I just want black. Okay, so I'm not going to just click the trace image right here. 
I'm going to go under window to the image trace option right here. It's the image trace option right there. See image trace option. And I'm going to go to the advanced option right here, advanced, and I'm going to tell it to ignore white right here. It's an option that says ignore white right there. By doing that, what it's going to do is the white area will be gone and I'll be just left with a black vector apple. Again, here we go. I'm going to click on trace image option under advanced ignore white and I'm going to hit trace and I have an apple. Now for right now it sees it as a group right now it sees it as a group so in order to edit it let's say I wanted to put some color in here maybe this is my logo for my um, food app idea maybe this is a logo so in order to edit it after you trace it tracing turns it into a vector to edit it, I go underneath Object, Expand, and by doing Object, Expand, and Illustrator, what that'll do is this will convert it into an object. And now once it's an object, I can do things to it. It's got a fill and a stroke, fill and stroke. Uh, maybe we'll put a red line around the, the outside. Maybe I'll make that kind of big. There we go. How about that? And that could be my shape. Okay, let me do another one. And I have uh, my person, right? I had a, like a member icon. So I'm going to go File, Place. I'm going to choose my other icon that I stole. This one that I stole. I play, and I'm going to place that in there as well. And then, again, under the pop-up window, Image Trace, I'm going to make sure it says Ignore White is checked under Advanced. Ignore White and I'm gonna say trace and it'll trace it then if I want to edit it just like I said if you want to edit it you need to go underneath object expand and expand and it'll make it into an object and you should be able to edit it uh, do you want, should we put a red line around it? No. How about we make it a different color? Uh oh, it's not color. We got to tell it to be color. There we go. Okay, so I have two icons that I could use now in my design. Easy to go and look at the known project, see what you like, and steal it if you have to for right now. I know once you work at a company, you'll be paying for these things, right? I buy stock, you know, I, I do the videos over at Zircon over there, I make their website over there. I have a stock art account, buy things, that's what you do, you buy things, that's why companies have money to buy things, okay, so I'm just showing you here because we're learning, okay, let me put these in a design, I'm going to talk about Sketch again, I know um, some of you, you, Photoshop is fine, I know you started in Photoshop and I know I'm doing different applications, but they both do things that are very similar, so again, I'm going to do Sketch again today. I'm going to start with a new document. Actually, let's not do new document. Let's do the template. So we can do it. So, again, the templates you can start with would be uh, Android icon design, iOS app icon, iOS UI design, material design, or web design. Okay, of course, material design is Android, right? Android is Android there. iOS is iOS, and iOS UI design is what I'm going to choose because I'm going to use an iOS app. So I'm going to choose that one, and it's fine. It shows you all the components. Great. You got examples of what it might look like, right? You got examples there. And so, um, You also have symbols. So let me talk briefly about this and why I chose to start with this. So these symbols are linked objects that you can reuse over and over again. In fact, what you can do is you can change the text in here to be your text and then reuse it over and over and over again. Okay, so 
See how it says at the very top, um, uh, where was it? I was going to use some of these titles right here. I was going to put my app name in there, and it'll change it here. But then if I use this bar at the top on another page, it'll automatically change. These are all linked things is what I'm trying to say. So this is the reason why you might choose the iOS, what did I say, app? Oh, no, iOS UI, right? So, the, so of course, I don't want to start with this area to have that. So I'm going to start with a blank screen. Then I'm going to put my stuff in there, and then put some of this stuff in there as well. I'm going to mix what the pre-made stuff with my own stuff that you just saw me make in Illustrator, right? So let's try that. So to make a new screen, new screen, we're going to use a page. So um, to make a page, um, you see where I hear where it has a little plus? See the little plus right there? See the little plus at the top up here? Boom, add a page. And we can call it um, my, um, what am I making? Oh, I'm making a food app. This is going to be uh, food waste. No, what, what did I say I was going to make? Food something? Food, leftover food, right? Left over app. So I made a new page. On that page, I'm going to put some screens. So think of a page as being like a group, and then you can have multiple artboards in a page. So once I made one page, right here, page, I can then go over to here and say artboard. That's a little plus up here, artboard. And of course, you got your iPhones over here. It doesn't have the new ones yet. You'd probably have to update. Once you update, you'll probably get the new ones. And so I'm going to use the iPhone 7 Plus. I'm going to drag that out. And then it has an iPhone 7 Plus right there. I'm going to make maybe my opening screen. You can name this screen if you want. Right now, you notice this says iPhone 7 Plus, right? I can actually duplicate this as well. I can make another one by holding that option, click, and drag, just like you would in Photoshop. Option, click, and drag. So I can duplicate these artboards to make several ones. So maybe my first one is going to be called, this is my um, uh, loading screen. That's this one right here. See, loading screen. And then this one could be um, login screen. And then this one could be um, 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 uh, main menu, main menu after they log in. And so I have three screens that I can design. Okay, let me bring my logo in. Oh, actually, let's make a background. Let's make a background. So let's say I wanted to have a background. Oh, and I want to have the I, I want to have the um, the the uh, top screen be the AT and T. You know, the top of your phone, right? You see the little bars, right, and all that stuff. You want to have that at the top of your design. Uh, you can go and do that by inserting uh, from that pre-made stuff under symbols. If you go under symbols, remember since we started with the iOS UI, it has some pre-made stuff up there. You got your search, search bar, you got your navigational bar, you got search bar, status bar, tab bar, toolbar, cells, you got applications, buttons, um, so on, slider, table, you got the keyboard, you got the miscellaneous, you got overrides, and you have views. And the view I want is, uh, what do I want? I thought the bar, navigational bar, There, I thought there was a top bar. What bar do I want? Let me see. I guess there's a search bar. I don't know. Let's just just do um, Safari. No, no, I don't want Safari. I want search. I guess we could just put navigational bar. So this one was called navigational bar, and it looks a little small, probably because it, it was probably for a different iPhone. You can scale it to fit the screen if you want. 
You can scale it to fit the screen. Um, if you use some of this pre, let me zoom in. If you use some of this pre-made stuff, you'll notice here. Yeah, this is kind of a the bar at the top now, so I can I can l load that in, and that was navigational bar. But again, it says sketch there, and of course we don't want it to say sketch there. What do you want it to say? Your favorite uh, cell phone company is what? What's your favorite cell phone company? AT and T, right? No. Verizon? Sprint? Do, is Sprint still in business? T-Mobile? Okay, so here we go. Now this is, you remember that, that chart we saw before, right? Remember that chart we saw before with all the different navigational elements on it, right? Well, that chart is linked. So if I come over here, and in fact, watch this. If I, I can duplicate this over here, I can duplicate it there. Probably not the best duplicating there. And I can duplicate it here. And if I double click on it, if I double click on it, it'll take me to that screen with all the different pieces on it. See the screen with all the pieces on it? And then I can go and change stuff. I can, oh, where's my title? There it is. How uh, do I title? Title, title. And I can put my, my company name in. What, it, what is my company I'm doing? Um, left over food dot com. I don't know. Whatever. And then um, notice how if I change it there, it changes it there, and it changes it there. See, it changes on all of them because it's a symbol, and that symbol is linked. Does that make sense? And, of course, we don't want Sketch up there. What did we say we wanted? Uh, T-Mobile? T-Mobile? T-Mobile right here? Was it T? Dash mobile, is that it? M O B I L E? Oh, that doesn't fit. Oh, it's all lower. Still doesn't fit. How about I put in AT&T? We'll make it fit. There we go. Look. There we go. Cheat. Okay, so we can put that in, put that in, put that in. There we go. Okay, so again, you get the idea of reusing artwork from previous screens. Now here's a problem though. Let's say on my first screen I don't want parent title, parent title, because this is some kind of like it looks like it's like some kind of navigational bar, right? If I go and I delete this, it's gonna delete it on all of them. See? So just be aware of that. You can also duplicate a symbol. Okay, you can duplicate that symbol as well and then reuse that over and over again. So even if I deleted the navigational element there, I could have duplicated that symbol and then done it over here if it was a navigational element. So you have options like that. In addition, um, my loading screen, I might have a background. Maybe I want a background color. I can simply put in a rectangle and I can put in a background color. And down here is after you, I just put a rectangle in. Again, the rectangle was underneath shapes, rectangle. And then I can put in um, a fill. See how it says fill over here? And I can give it a, a color if I want. What would leftover? Red is not good leftover food. What's good leftover food? Blue? That's not good. What would good leftover food be? Whatever, you get the idea. There's a screen. Okay, let's talk. Let's talk about bringing our artwork in from Illustrator here. So here's a problem. Here's a problem. One of the problems you have with bringing things in from like Illustrator is it doesn't scale very nicely. So let me show you what I mean. If I bring something in, let's say here, I got this nice big thick stroke around my my apple here. See the big stroke? This big black blue line that goes around. If I copy this, I'm going to copy it. I think I showed you this last class. I can select my object in Illustrator, copy it, and I can go over to Sketch, and I can paste. It looks good, and everything looks beautiful. But here's the problem. If I scale it down, look how thick 
the stroke stays the same. The stroke does not scale. And I haven't figured out how to kind of not have that happen. There might be a way to avoid that, but I haven't figured that out. You see that? The stroke stays the same. The only way I was able to 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 not have that happen was to actually do it in Illustrator. In Illustrator, I can scale and the stroke can scale. I just haven't figured it out here in this program. So maybe if you can figure that out for me, you can tell me. How about that? Yeah? You can just create that um, just like as PNG and just it's like imported it. In. Yeah, but then it, it won't be a vector anymore. I was trying to keep it a vector. That's Drawing. all. Yeah. So again, uh, inside of Illustrator, if you scale inside of Illustrator here, and there's the scale tool right here. See it right here? It's called the scale tool. If you double click on it, you'll say it's scale strokes and effects. See that right there? Strokes and effects. And so you can scale that. Now here's another problem. This object right here is actually made up of a bunch of, bunch of objects. So if I copy and paste that in as well, and that was going to go into my login screen here, this one over here. If I paste it, oh, oh, I had to select it. If I put it over here, um, it, it kind of has some problems too. So it's not the best thing, but it, it's, it tends to work right now. Okay, let's not worry about that. It seems to be working. So um, a loading screen. Um, let me finish with that. If I want this rectangle color to come over, I can duplicate that as well. Um, duplicate this as well. If I wanted to, um, I want to shrink this down so it's up in the corner up here. The pro uh oh, notice how I miss. I lost my um, my little people here. I might have to rearrange and send to back. Where's rearrange, rearrange, arrange, send to back. There we go. So I have my background. I have my icon here. I have my Apple uh, logo here. Um, let's say on my second screen here, I wanted to um, shrink it down so it's in the upper corner. Ah, oh, look at that. The stroke didn't shrink right. Oh. Get that. So I'm going to go and do it in Illustrator. I haven't figured out how to fix that yet. So I'm going to click on here. I'm going to double click here and I'm going to shrink it down like 30%. So if I shrink this down in Illustrator, it will also shrink the stroke. So I'm going to copy that now and paste it in here. And then um, if I want to reuse this over and over again, I can make this into a symbol. So right now I have the, the apple here. I like this apple. I like it a lot, but I want to reuse it. Instead of duplicating it like this and putting it over here like that, you can do that. But what I've done is I just duplicated the object, which is fine. But a better way might be to take that symbol that you have, in case this fruit right here. So a better way might be to take this piece of fruit here and make it into a symbol. To make it into a symbol, you see it says create symbol. You see it up here at the very top up here? If I create symbol in there, it's going to ask me what kind of symbol. And I'm going to give it a name. Let's call it uh, um, Byte. Apple, logo, whatever you want to call it. And it saves it as a symbol. So here we go. If I go over here now and I take that symbol right here, and I could duplicate it here, or if I'm in this window over here, I can say insert symbol, and I can see my byte apple shows up in there. Do you see it right here? It shows up as well, and I can insert it in there. And then once it's a symbol, if I make changes to it, it'll change on all the documents. Does that make sense? Just like it did with the navigational bar up here. You understand? Okay, last thing for today will be uh, how to make boxes. So I'm going to have a login screen over here. Uh, one of the things you can do is in my login screen, 
I'm going to have, uh, and this is what I want you to practice, in my login screen, I'm going to do a, a, a rounded box for login. And in there, you have all these options over here with borders and fills. And uh, I'm going to make my border a little bit thicker here. And then you also have an option for shadow. And you can see shadow in there. So you have options down here for shadow. So this will be my maybe my login screen. And let me bring that to the front. And then um, maybe it's my email. There's a text option in there for email. So the email is their login. And you can choose a font. Whoosh. I don't know about that one. There we go. Round and bold. And you can choose a style. And so here is my kind of my login screen right here. So uh, for my login screen, I love this font. Uh, I like the size of it and so on. And for my password box, I want to reuse this font. But I don't remember what size or what font I used. So what you can do is when you're putting text into this program, it's very similar to doing a symbol. But I can also do a what's called a text style. See it over here where it says text style right there? So I can actually go and create a new style, and this is my email style. See that? And so it all may, and you could change that. This could be my uh, main uh, login text, like that. So if I make another box, um, but I'm not really going to make a new box, I'm just going to duplicate this one. I'm going to duplicate this box and then we'll put in password uh, I don't have a symbol for password but you'll notice the text did take on the same characteristics if I click on it you see it's the main login text style so you can reuse text that way you don't have to keep remembering. Just like in, in CSS, right? You reuse the same text in CSS, right? Okay, so as you are thinking of your idea, you should be practicing um, either... You could do this stuff in Photoshop, but Sketch was a little bit easier, that's all. Especially with the, these. Now, if you want to use Photoshop, there's also pre-made templates. This pre-made template you can download it for Photoshop. So all this stuff that you saw here in Sketch, you can download for Photoshop. And I haven't linked it up for you, but I, I can find it for you if you want. So um, we can just Google. And you type in iOS UI template for Photoshop. And then um, I don't know. Hopefully that's not a virus. I don't know which one is a good one, but I've downloaded them before. And this is free download. And you can download them. Oh, it wants me to do that. I don't know. There's a lot of free ones out there, but you can get a lot of free templates. I have some free free uh, templates. There we go. But do you see how quick you can put um, pages together? It's a little harder to come up with your idea than it is an article. I mean, it's just a different kind of infection with all that. And then you can use this as a good practice. That would be easier to come up with. Even if your friends can help you, right? If you have a friend. Can somebody use this in there?
he's heading to the cross? Is he in your team? Okay. Well, how about we, we, we start now? Let me stop my movie. It's still recording over there. Let me stop my movie, and then I can work with you, and you can explain to me your idea, and I can help you. How about right now? Let me, let me stop my video.